All right, peeps. It's me, Manny D, of In the Black, where we help achieve emotional, emotional, financial, emotional, financial, and physical well-being, and your relationship coach, doing with the parents, all that fun stuff. So today's video is going to be a bit long. Uh, this is all about my story. Uh, you know, more about me, my background, and where I've come from, my journey into how I'm up here, and you know. And you'll find that if you watch it all the way through, uh, whoever you are, it may it may it may resonate with you, it may not, and that's fine. You know, there's, there's only so many people that in our lives that we will vibe with on what, what on whatever level. So let's get right into it. Where do I start? Where do I start? Um, I'll start right here in the beginning. Um, you know, grew up here in Maryland, born and raised, full fledged Maryland native, if you want to call that, and family life was good and this is where how I got into personal development to where I am now as far as coaching people who have issues with their parents you know be a mom dad or both and for me I remember the day it started because growing up was fine up until about fifth grade or so my parents would were together they raised us you know they loved us didn't abuse us or anything like that there's no drug issues or drinking issues no, nothing like that but I would find that the issue that they had would come to light later on in my life. Um, you know, the funny thing about your parents is that, like, when you're young, you look at them and like, oh, like, like they're perfect. Like you don't see them, you don't see see them for their flaws. But then, but then as you get older, you do start to see, oh shit, they're not this godlike thing. They're human and they're not perfect, and you will get frustrated with them, you know. So. Um, I remember the day my parents announced that announced their separation. Um, and before it actually happened, I remember clearly um, my parents getting into arguments and they would yell, like yell and scream at each other. Like it was loud. We misses were here. And this would happen. I don't remember at what point, but every time they would they would they would yell at each other, um, because they'd they'd be arguing, I would and me and my sister would have the same fear. We would fear that, oh my God, like they're gonna get divorced, they're gonna separate. And I think one night they heard us upset about it and um, we shared that concern and fear with them. And I remember them saying, oh no, 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 don't worry about that. That, that That's not gonna happen. Well, um, when I was in fifth grade, yeah, fifth grade, I remember it was like the month of May, it was a spring day, or it was April. It was a day where it was nice outside, I was riding my bike, with my Coat. So it's had to be April or May, most likely most likely May. I remember riding my bike, and then I also remember at some point, whatever reason, not 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 whatever reason, but going into my house, and I remember my mother sitting on. I remember this day being very bright. To this day, I don't know why it's a six out of all these in my life. This one, this one sticks out as number one. I remember her sitting out, sitting on the sitting on the side of the couch like this, like very stern, very tense my father was on the other couch sitting kind of like with his head down looking sad and i sat on the couch with my mother and my sister sat on the couch with my father and my parents told us what was going on holding this water mm. so they told us what was going down that they're separating and everything else and that moment was a decisive moment in my life, a turning point where I was headed down one path, emotional health and development, and I took a drastic left turn. Before my parents announced, you know, they're separated, I had this view and belief that when your parents separate and divorce, I, I, had, other, I had friends whose parents were divorced. I believed it was something that was stupid and embarrassing to, to get upset about. So I was like, all right, I decided that I would not get upset about it. I was going to let it be. In that moment, they said that they're separating, and here's what happened. My sister and I took drastically different paths. My sister did the healthy thing, which which is which which is what which is what a child should do um, when they find find out, find out their parents are separating. My sister started crying and dealing with the emotional pain right then and there. I did not. Um, I just went okay. And I just let it be. I was I was so shocked and in, in such disbelief that I kind of stayed around. The, I stayed I, I stayed at the house for like a good like couple hours and talking to my dad and told some of the neighbors. And um, I remember my dad telling me like you know I'll still be around. I'm not going anywhere. I'm still be here to see you. And I was just like, 
still in shock of like how could this happen to my parents like i didn't see this happening like i'm like how can this happen you know and that boo that disbelief sat with me up until like through middle school and through high school you know later on in my life and i just remember like just being like holy shit like this is legit. like my parents are separate like this is how can this happen and that was that put me down on a path of this fear that I didn't realize at the time of not wanting to repeat what my parents did. So, parents separated and the divorce took like I think four years. They finally got divorced in like 2000. They stopped, they stopped, they announced, they announced, they announced the, their separation in 96, something like that. But it took a long time for the actual like, for the divorce to get finalized. And I remember growing up and as I got older, I remember telling my mom, more so my mom than my dad, that like, you know, hey, you do what you gotta do. If you date other people, it's fine. Just, um, just, um, um, you know, I'm gonna do me. Let me have my don'ts and video games, whatever, and I'll be fine, you know? And another thing too, my parents were, were, were really concerned because I wasn't showing any signs of distress or sadness. They thought I was in denial and they thought, oh my God, it's going to explode and all the shit. But I didn't have anything bad with me. Nothing really bad happened. Like I didn't act out. I didn't do anything dumb. I still did the same things. I still did well in school. Like oftentimes when divorce happens, one of the signs that a child's not doing well with it is, is, is their is their performance school drops. Mine didn't. It said the same and you know, I did what I did. Like so what it was. And I remember like I remember like, all right, just going through and I remember through a lot, a lot of it throughout through through elementary school going to counseling at my school and all this stuff going on and not wanting to go to therapy and stuff. And my dad, my dad was like, no man, you need to go because you're in denial. I'm like, no, I'm not. My mom's still gonna be going. I'm like, I don't wanna go. Like, I didn't want to go. So at that time, I believe that was fine. I was like, I'm cool. I'm not doing anything dumb. I'm not sad I'm trying to hurt myself or anything. Like I was going to school, doing my work, hanging my friends and that's it. That's all I want to do. My parents being, you know, parents and their concern, not, really wanted to believe me just didn't do that so as time went on went through middle school my parents dated other people my dad got um eventually married got remarried a second time my mother dated different men and middle school went through weren't really any issues i just remember my, my parents like would get in arguments and yell at each other and my i'd be like this is embarrassing and my parents got to a point where they couldn't talk with each other. Um, they had to literally type up notes, hand it off, and be like, peace. I remember seeing my, my dad's visitations was Tuesdays, Tuesday and Thursday nights. We got to have dinner with him from like four until eight or whatever. And then we saw him every other weekend. That was weird. And then he'd call and, and then eventually I stopped calling him because I just, just did. I don't know, I just thought. I would call him every day and I just kind of stopped after that. And uh, oh, I was bringing some hurt feelings. Like, it's crazy sharing this. So, the big things didn't start happening. The issues with my mother didn't, didn't, really, didn't really start to surface until about, I think, mm, like 14, 15 years of age. Because I remember as I grew up and as you become a teenager, you want to do more. I, I do believe that we, we as humans are all, are always on a continual look for expansion of who we are to do more, be more, have more, everything else. So when you're teenage years, you become more consciously aware of the world. You're like, oh shit, I want to do, you know, all these things. And your parents go, oh shit, you're a teenager. You want to do all these things. So they try and like constrict you for your own safety and you fight them and they fight you and you're like I want to do this and, and it's just crazy I didn't really do that so much with my parents God or whatever because my whole thing with my life has been like let me do me I'm gonna do I'm, I'll do what I say and that's it like leave me the fuck alone and I'll, leave, I'll let you be that's it simple it's when you violate that in my mind I go uh excuse me you can't touch me like what the fuck are you doing so what happened was, like, as I got older, I noticed that my mother and my father decided were raising me in different ways that did not work for me. It kind of actually, at one point, I didn't. I felt confused. My mother, who, as I got older, I would, I would start to get in fights with her, and I, I would, I have all this anger. Actually, I started, I started holding back anger with her, and I think it was like 12, 11, 11, 12, 13. 
I was in fights with her. I go to my room and I and I would and I, and I would just be like, and I'd, I would hold it. I did that for years. I'm telling you, if you hold anger long enough, it it, it comes back to bite you in the ass. It only hurts you. It doesn't it doesn't hurt the other person. So I did all that. So I started I started having issues with her because what happened was my dad would be like, oh Matt, you can you know you're 13, 14, 15, you you can do more. You're showing maturity and you should be able to do excellence in your own. Whereas my mother had this ass backwards reality of of like at least in my mind it was and still kind of is, even though she's trying to do the best kid with with trying to um, you know just just be raise me and protect me. Her view was I'm the mother, you're this child, do as I say, and this is what you're gonna do, and no no no, and I fucking hated it because I got to a point as I got older where I was being therapy man and I'd be like. So what am I? Am I the child? Or am I this maturing young adult? Which one? Because I don't agree with what she does. Because my dad's supposed to say to certain things. I do these things. She's let me do this. My dad's like, oh, your friends have cars? They got a license? Get in the car. Mom's like, have they been driving six months? No, you can't do that. And I was like, this is, and I hate, I hated it. Couldn't stand that shit. I want to be like, fuck you. I'm done. I should just be like, fuck it, like. And just gone crazy, like, when you to ground me and I still don't listen to you, like, whoop de whoop de woo whoop de doo you know, and this is, that's where a lot of it started, and I hated having to, trying to figure out, what the fuck am I, like, who am I, am I the child, or am I, or am I this maturing adult, and the unfortunate thing in life is that no one tells you, very few people tell you in your life that, oh, you define who you are, no one else does. But when it comes to your parents, no one tells you that. You're just told, these are your parents, obey them. And we do that because you have no choice when you're born. You're like, who the fuck are these people? And you, that's what you go by. Very few parents tell you, oh yeah, you can be who you are. Don't let anyone tell you, not even me. Very few parents do that, few. So you don't have that message, you're looking for something else, and you feel like something's missing, you're like, you go crazy, that's what I felt like. I felt like as I grew up with my mother, as I, as I started more and more issues with her, so I'll get in more detail in part two, I felt like something's not right. Am I going crazy here? Because what happened was I was always angry and fights with her, I wouldn't agree with her, I run to my father about stuff, and talk to him, and I'd be like, am I wrong, am I crazy for this shit? I go to therapy, say, I say the same thing, I talk to people, and people would be like, no, 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 like, you're, you're good. And then my mother would be like, well, you gotta do this, blah, blah, blah. And I'd be like, what the fuck's going on? It drove me nuts. I hated that time in my life. It's like, you're trying to define yourself, discover who you are, and when you get this resistance to it, it fucks with you, and you're just like, this is bullshit. Now, here's the thing. Did my mother really realize what she was doing? No. Was she some abusive, most abusive mother? No. Could there have been some emotional abuse that she didn't realize she was doing? Yes. But was she some drug addict, fucked up mom who wasn't there? No. I was fortunate enough to have both parents still be, still be active in my life and still care and love me. It's just that when you grow up in this situation or anything else, and you have parent issues, even if both parents are providing for you financially, be it if one of them or both fucks up the emotional part of giving you love that you need to feel good about your your relationship with them and yourself and life, it fucks with you. It messes with you and you go, oh, something's not right. So, and all that was built up until I came to another point in my life where I had another showing point where I got sick of doing mother and I decided to make a uh, big decision when I turned 16. As far as what that what that what that decision is, I'll share with you now. I'll share I'll share with you. I will share that with you on part two. So if you like this video, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching all the way through. It's long. Like this video. Share it, share it with someone if, if you feel like someone else to hear this. Comment below, and uh, I look forward to hearing from you. Getting black. Peace.